We're talking about Fracture, a map that we don't really know a lot about either of these teams on, and already they're looking to fight. I like that cam. It's going to force out all of this control towards Dish. QCK still wanted to fight for it, and he's paid for that with his life. His teammate, though, Khalil, coming in with at least the first. A little bit paranoid on that, and he'll be dropped as well. A little bit more aggressive from Khalil. Obviously picking up a, an Astra here. A little bit more interesting from his side of things. We've seen him switch up those roles. <laughs> Cast those. What? Damn. All right. He's here to play today. Four kills already in the pistol round. And NZR, well, he's got a fair amount to do here in this retake. I would say I'm not a believer. No, not quite. I mean, Klaus is still up and about looking for that ace as well. And he's going to catch him off guard on a side angle. Oh, but he won't end up. Not too much to learn from either, because of course, both of these teams are going to be uh, crew coming in with a strong buy. Furia, not so much. They've only got the classics, even a shorty to play with there. And I'm not too surprised with where it's being deployed up towards the tower. And the reality is, you know, crew at this point, they've been flawless so far. Already two players are pretty low tagged and McKesnet falling. They kind of want to be careful not to lose anyone else because they did all invest. There's no ghost or anything carried through in this round. Yeah, anything extra here, realistically, from Furia would be a, a nice little bonus. Now, one of the things I, I kind of want to talk about, although there have only been a couple of matchups within these sort of like high level tournaments, but Crew have a pretty decent record when it comes to facing off against the Brazilian teams. Like, we've already seen them beat out yeah. Vivo Keyes, obviously, before they updated their roster with MW Zero and previously also beating out Shark. So, and I think both in a 2-0 fashion, and at least in the case with Vivo Keed, personally, I thought Vivo Keed were coming into that as my favorite for the match. So I, I would say if they were trying new things like a fracture, I doubt they would have seen that from each say other. say that for both teams. Yeah, absolutely. But I think the fact the crew have been so dominant against the True. Brazilian teams in the past, it's probably just someone you want to stay away from. And if you are scrimming them, it's going to be an ascent or something, you know, nothing really out of the ordinary, unlike uh, that. What? How did Zan get away with two to start that out? Furia dominating the early fights and looking at a 4v2 now. Yeah, they had a, a heavier stack in towards this A site as well. And now they're looking at the remaining two. Now, this is similar to the last round. As much damage as crew can hope to achieve. Make it so that there's some repurchases. Make it so that your rebuy is going to be strong. Every single player, though, is coming in from Dish. And I don't think anybody's going to be expecting this. Straight through the nebula they go, looking to try and pick them apart. It gives an opportunity. <laughs> it's a bit of a mixed bag, like just actually keeping things up. Or about, no, wait, I've got that backwards. I'm talking about Furia. It doesn't seem That's, to matter, that though. That happened to me. It's okay. Because uh, Zand has just popped the face of Klaus. And he actually has his Bladestorm now, so he could just drop that weapon over and play his Bladestorm instead. Kind of wild to see so many players on Furia with those pistols, but they're still having the early round success. Zand lit to one HP. Probably going to look to transfer that rifle over to a to a teammate as the blade storm, but with one health, I highly doubt you're going to yeah, be deploying done. it. You'll play the sheriff instead. Yeah, he's head over to his teammate, and there he is. Mazin finding the kill will get traded out in response. Again, bear in mind there are some weaker weapons here for Furia, but they do still have a man advantage, even if he is on just a slither of health. Destroyed. It's going to be the rotation coming through from crew, trying to reposition and find themselves another opening. And they also have to go and get the spike. Yeah, that's one of the big problems for them right now. Luckily, the aggression is kind of tapered off towards that B site, so the spike can be recovered and brought I mean, brought where, though? That's the problem. They were looking for a little bit of A-site control. They're going to move through Dish, but Furious still have a trap wire there. That's going to be free information. Oh, no, that's going to be free information. Pushing it and Mazzino well. has no idea that there's a player. Oh, he does. He suspects it's a double bush. They've done it too often, but Furious still get away with the kill, leaving Kesnan and Delzik to do it all in a 2v3. And they're running out of time. Gonna be able to get on to the bar. Zan still getting kills, even with just one health. And now it is left all on to Kesnit to try and clutch this one back. Not on his usual age. He's actually gonna pop himself up. His opponent's been lodged up into the air, flying through the sky, QZK. But they're still both over on Dish. And he has an inkling there coming from the other direction. He's got to be careful as they look to try and drop down. The sound cue will give it away. Sprays down the first, but the trade comes in thick and king before this cast went through, before we actually knew the fracture was coming up as a map. And I was saying to you, like, oh, yeah, recently it looks like Kesnit has sort of gone into a more of like a puggy agent role. He's been picking up a Rainer here and there. He's on breach. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not exactly what we uh, anticipated, let's say. I like to see it though, man. Like adding mm. in that extra death, especially when it's an agent like Breach on this map. Someone's got to do it. 
Yeah, I'm just thinking back though, and I, I wasn't, I was never particularly impressed in comparison to some other agents with his sky. So I want to see if it's going to okay. work out. Like at least on his fragging ability, I don't think there's any questions when it comes to Kesnit. Like he is an utter superstar. But I want to see how good his breach is, not just how good his aim is. That's a very interesting ult coming out of the attack side. It doesn't quite get them onto the site. I'll get them right up to it, but it almost feels like a disadvantage, Tom, unless they're going to try to split in through the middle, perhaps? No, they're committing to this site, losing Nagzit already, and now, oh, well, the Viper's pick coming out on the other side. Like we said, it's very difficult for these players to actually get in towards the site. It's very difficult for them to stay alive as well, as Kesnit's going to be left alive in a 1v5. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put too much down to his breach in this round. If I'll be brutally honest, with just like every player yeah. peeking him at once. <laughs> I like that from Furia though. That, that, like, this is one of the things I think that a lot of people have they made compar dish, comparatively to other teams within their region is that Furia are very well regimented oh. and use their utility. These, incredibly well. These are horrible people. These are actually horrible people on Fury. Look at their setup on Dish. You've got a Breach ready with the Flash. As soon as Jet takes contact, she kills someone, presumably, because it's Zand. And oh, it's not even a Flash. It's a Rolling Thunder. I mean, he's swapping between the two. The idea in the early round was to get a peek, get a kill, dash out, Flash, and then have the peek come out of the Astro, which would be the most disgusting double opening that we've seen. Instead, they light round push up and look for the information. They'll get the map control. And now, really, the ball is in cruise court. If they can manage to up the pace and push into a site, God. Or shut down that push, but neither happens. Yeah, this whole round is disgusting. Even their B setup is something I want to highlight. Really low trips, a poison orb so that it they're covers so you walking through it. Oh, like, they're so late. It, it just seems like Fury are playing this round incredibly well. But there is a response with a cosmic divide. Mahazin's actually going to be caught with his gun out. And this is falling apart now. Khalil will at least trade one back. And Zand is in position just to try and deny them. Turning it into a 2v3 scenario, but they're starting to win the duels back. A two versus two. Zand desperately low on HP, just trying to dodge around the aftershock, but they pincered him into a corner. And what started like such a good setup now comes down just to NZR. Wide coming in. That just completely ruined Furious Day. The round was already in the bag, and somehow Crew managed to snatch it back. Uh, Ryan, Ryan actually said to me earlier, wouldn't it be funny if Mazin and Mazinia played against each other? And I'm realizing the answer is no. No, it wouldn't actually. <laughs> it's enough. not. It's a little bit a little bit confusing, a little bit frustrating, but you know what? I, I think we'll get through it. We're probably gonna slip up at least a couple more times. This is a setup I was talking about, though. They, they have a, a, I think they were, they did eventually put down a star here as well, and initially had themselves the poison orb. So you can't even see the trips as you attempt to walk in. It, it just makes it so irritating to try and get through this, and they're so low that obviously if you try and jump over them into the site, you're going to look like a moron. Hmm. Oh, there's a snake bite coming through. That's nags it off the angle. Oh, I thought he was going to shoot in through the edge, but instead he's just holding, waiting. Viper's wall goes down. Will the crab well pull them back into the trip? That's the real question if they try and push into this. Here comes the rolling thunder, but Nagza, as he tries to jump over, has just been caught. QZK already managing to find a couple of kills. This B site hold is just looking disgusting. And they're finding openers every single time that crew actually try and push into the site. It's gonna come down to the clutch ability of the squad once again. But they have it in bucket loads because it's not pretty. QZK is having a round and a half, and Mitch, there's only two remaining. Yeah, it's going to be a tough hold for Crew, and with another player down, walking in through that Cosmic Divide. The only chance for Mazzino. Taking out this round again, we talked about Dish and how aggressive it's been, but Furia are going to swap it up. This is the second time we've seen them go towards main, but Nagzit wants to run it down, and he will eliminate Zand, leaving Khalil in the corner. Good for one at least, and a little bit more. Not a bad performance. Uh, all things considered, but it will be an upgrade of a rifle for crew at least. And with the 2v3 that they've got, that operator that was in the hands of Klaus. In fact, Mazzino wants to go join them to pick it up instead. I don't know if he's going to make it across. Now this spot actually becomes, I was going to say, a little bit awkward up, yeah. for Mazin. So I'm, I'm glad that he falls out from there because that, that really hasn't gone too well. There is a flank coming through from Dish as well as the weaponry is slowly retrieved. The problem is the more time that is taken here by the side of Furia, or but sorry, by the time of crew, the more screwed Fury again. Now they are actually watching this with an operator. The time it could be awful. He's starting to sneak his way around the back of the site. I think he's dead for sure. NCR just catches him in the open, not expecting him to come through that late. And they just clean this up all too easy. 
I like the idea from crew. I, I think again, we see that quite commonly, the, the sort of fault line combination with the gravity well behind Thank it. You. The problem is again, Furia just seemed to have adaptations where all this might actually be the best we've seen so far in the tournament. Two at least. Oh, in the tournament? Yes, I would agree, 100%. I'm a big fan of what they're doing. And, uh, well, Nagsit is already in their spawn. This is an incredibly fast pace. A player who previously pushed up on A main, and now he's going to have two players close oh. with no idea that he's already here. Ooh, he catches one off guard nice and easy, even good for a Ooh, second as Khalil out. falls. Sure, the info will be there to play with for Fury, but Long crew have got the yeah, advantage. Yeah, they've got themselves an afterplant, a deep Viper's pit, so they, it's very difficult to actually get anywhere Five near planted. the site without having to bypass Klaus on the way forward. This is going to be a very, very difficult scenario, and you actually see on the extremities as well, there are players ready and waiting. Now, this does give individual jewels, and as I say that, NZR actually manages to win one of them. So back into a 3v3 scenario, Delzik will trade and keep things in a pretty good position, and they need to try and clear somebody on the wrap back around the swing from Delzik. Actually grants another, and now it's left all onto Zand. Timer ticking, Operator wanting to be saved, and Crew with a fast-paced take are going to get themselves a fall. I think we can forgive Zand for not going for that retake with an op into a Viper's yeah. pit with limited time. Probably the best call to save that one through. But yeah, massive round from Nagsit. The fact that he has pushed up on Abel found a different angle and really catch him off guard. Look at this, again, you're going to see Nagzit pushing up and taking dish control. First couple of seconds, he's already in there. There's a flash Ooh. to support him. They are really trying to pressure oh, no. this control that Furia have been getting again and again. There are some very good reasons why you don't go pushing through a Viper's Pit too often, and I mm -hmm. think that is one of them. Especially, I, I like the fact that they still have Scythe Utility in yeah, there. Yeah, it's <laughs> just nasty. Like, it's just like, you, you, you can't even see half the stuff they're doing. Klaus, though, again, they've managed to take space in towards the spawn. This is something that has now happened a multitude of times. It's starting to become a bit of a worry for Furia. Now, with A-Main under their belt, and Zan watching in that direction. He actually whiffs. The trade is there again from Khalil, who's trying to catch them on the cross. A good fault line will hold him back and give an afterplant once again. But they're still watching to try and find where Klaus Spike has gone, planted. because with the space he has, he could be anywhere. Yeah, lots of time, but look at that flank coming through. Looks like Khalil won't be all too much longer. Uh, when these two players rush on in, Jet should be able to completely blindside them. Or even Klaus, who's now starting to move up. I don't think they're going to even Here. look towards the side. Time's going to be too low when they run back into the side as well. Really, a uh, player who has to be making this play is QCK. And if he doesn't find an angle pretty soon, those players are just going to be mowed down coming out of main. The Rolling One Thunder doesn't even need to be used. They realize that. Kesnet cleaning it up. Things, though, is the fact of the if you look at Kesnet's peak there in the second player, it was unnecessary. When he pulled out the Rolling Thunder, put it away, and swung, if he dies, his teammates are under a lot of pressure over on that left side. However, normally I don't think he would make that play. Right now he is fired yes. up and he yeah. is feeling it. And that is scary because the level of predictability goes down massively when your opponents are feeling that comfortable. They can do whatever the hell they want. And Klaus right now, well, he's in a bit of danger. Pushed up, the smoke was timed perfectly. I don't think that was intentional at all, but it works out for QCK as Furia pick up the opening. And straight away, you see just crew fall back off this angle. They know that if, if there's been a lot of early presence on one side of the map, chances are there's an opening elsewhere. And I think mid rounds are so important when it comes to fracture, more so than any other map, because there's always going to be space somewhere. You can't split your defense that thin. Now you do currently have Khalil watching for this, though. So they've given up a main, Mitch, but they've done it somewhat intentionally. Oh, yeah. Again, this is what we've seen from Furia. Round in, round out. They'll push up a main, they'll push up dish. Wherever they go, that's the part of the map they want to control. Utility is left elsewhere to slow them down. You're going to have some Astro Utility burned up, but nothing found for it because that Cosmic Divide gets crew onto site for free. And now we're going to have Furia having to fight back in afterwards. Still, though, they have the man advantage to do it. They have a Cosmic Divide of their own as well. Now, one of the things, though, is that... Normally, Crew has a lot more control than this. And you can see they're actually going to start fighting for it in the form of Nagzer because they have managed to take control of mid in a lot of these scenarios, which has made retakes oh, oh. really awkward. Zan, though, is just going to go up above. He may be vulnerable, but he's still fighting. Has Khalil what? alongside him and just lands the headshot. It's left all onto Nagzit. They expect him to be here. And Zan is going to land every single knife. It will be 6-5 to five in favor of Furia. Next of this map and what it means, we want to see crew come in and deliver a solid first half because when they swap to the defense, if Furia are as prepared over on the attack, which I'd imagine they will be, I get a little bit worried. 
they've managed to isolate both of those duels. Yeah. <laughs> that is not a, a pretty picture again. There's going to be this control taken, but it's expected now. And that's the thing. There was a couple of rounds for crew where they got that spawn control and they were able to win rounds off the back of it. Well, it hasn't happened in the last couple. Keznit, though, he's just popping off. What on earth is that? Three headshots in a matter of seconds. He turns this round on its head. Making this a possible scenario. A two versus two. The flash placed into both players' faces. Oh. The peek through from Delzig, but he doesn't expect Zan into the 1v1. The stun has landed perfectly onto him. Kesnet has just used it to escape. Has no Zeta. Zeta. Yeah, God, I remember that now. That was horrible. So I expected this to be Fury destroying them, to be honest. Groove impressed me. You know, re respect is earned, and they have certainly earned my respect today because they are playing an excellent game here on Fracture, showing their theory crafting, showing their ability not just as individuals, because, yeah, Kaznet has been unbelievable, but the rest of the team as well, their approach, the way that they're thinking about the map and how Furia are approaching it and trying to steal away that early control, an example of that being Nags and just getting so aggressive. Man, I love it, and this is what I want What I want to see. Teams elevating their level of play from season to season and not stagnating at a mediocre. Crew have done an excellent job so Ooh. far, but it's not enough yet. Six to six at the half, and we're in the pistol right now as they look over on the Furia side on the attack to take the B side. What's Crew's response going to be? Yeah, starting to make their way forward. No real information gone oh, just yet, right although up. I think they might have spotted out oh, the cam as they look to try and dash through, already tagged up at least a little bit. As they do look to try and push in towards this site. It's become a little bit awkward Oops. for them. Still plenty of time to try and make their move here, but they've been stuck behind the snake bite. And this means that the majority of the team can rotate over, left. especially with a flank already coming through. I think the most important is Kesnet is now here. He's got an aftershock to play with. His fault line should be up pretty soon. As they lose the first player here, crew fighting their way in towards this site. Lots of players on low HP. Nags at just 23 health. Oh, this is tough. They know where he's coming from as well. No opportunity to deny left. that plant. He's going to have to make his Five way through sewers here and try to catch them off on a different angle. But Tom, look at the HP of his opponents. If they play yeah. this one together, they might be able to trade it out, but they've got to be so careful not to be caught off guard. Yeah, the thing is now, though, the spike in their favor, they don't even really need to take any risks. It's up to Nagzit to try and find what is a, a very nice. awkward position, and it may have just gotten that little bit worse, having to take the extra time to get rid of the pin and... Well, they're, they're actually One running straight towards him. QZK, what's just happened there? A complete misread of the scenario. Maybe looking to try and get this one to half. Just going to have to try and hit the instant headshot. And it's need to premise that the majority of teams within this tournament so far have been a lot better when it comes to the attack. So the fact that crew have managed to keep things even while being on the defensive He's side triggered. is a very positive sign. Now, for the defense, I like this. Uh-oh. How, how good is their pistol play? Oh, no. <laughs> He's not good enough. Gonna make it's it away. Enough. <laughs> oh. uh, that was a very unfortunate duel to have to take. Zand was not going to updraft into that, I don't believe it. They're running onto the site, full control for Furia. Was they're going to overrun B, get a spike plant as well. But look who's very quickly coming here after that flank play spike in through planted. spawn. Furia will expect this, and it's only pistols. But they can still do damage if they're given the opportunity. Zan. Oh, I think he thought he was a little bit more in cover than he was. The fault line as well is superb. Already a couple of kills coming back, but NZR make sure it doesn't get too dangerous. You could have said coming into this would have caught them off guard. Evidently, they're comfortable, and now under attack, we want to see what else they have planned. This will be a bonus round, though, so we don't expect them to win it. But maybe they have some ideas, and it's going to be a full dish push out of them. Well, not, not quite full. Mazin's still playing towards the B side. Yeah, I, I can only assume he's trying his best to sell a fake here, and it has not worked. Delzik has just popped the heads of two players as they look to walk past, and he is managing to wrap his way back around, but I'm unsure what the plan is at this point, because, okay, if you're trying to throw a few pieces of utility in, bait people into rotating, I can understand the premise, but he was just walking through the tunnels. <laughs> yeah, I know, he's, he's walking back the other way now. Uh, he's really having a mosey. Having to gander around, seeing what's uh, what's going down. Thing is, at this point, you don't expect there to be kind of full rotates out of crew towards the B side, or the A side, sorry. And then the other aspect of it is the fact that you're going up against a Cypher and a Viper whose util is already put down. So getting in towards this Boston site is, I mean, it's really, really tough. They're going to kind of run headfirst into a brick wall and see if they can at least make a dent. They found my wire. I think the chances seem Key fairly slim, left. at least. Cage is being popped just to give that extra bit of space. Mazzino with a wonderful headshot. 
onto his counterpart without the O. And now without a head. One enemy remaining. Obviously, Khalil didn't want to run through that cage, but now he's going to be caught with 14 seconds left. And he's got to run through bullets. He's got to just left. run into them and die, pretty much. Do it. Well, then we ain't going to say anything about it. Eight to seven. Crew obviously just won that round flawlessly, but it was against weaker weapons. Furious still didn't really seem to crack the code of how to get in towards that site or, or either of the sites when it came down to their right slower there. play. But they will have looked at that round as an information gathering opportunity. They're figuring out where a crew, how are they playing? In the early round, are they getting aggressive? Whereas their utility, for example, a lot of the trap wires here are in pretty much the same positions as they were before. And just gathering that sort of intel can be quite valuable. Now that they're on their buy round, it's time to execute off of it. And you'll see they already have a Viper's fit to play off. Look who's, oh no! Taken down through the cage. Zand had a really nice timing on that, but it didn't have a nice finish to it. Yeah, and the worry is on this map in particular that the information that's just been picked up for free off that one kill it now basically tells tactic. them exactly what the plan was for Furia. So they have to almost attempt to try and rethink this or bait their opponents into something else. Yeah, one of the big things here, Nags, it's already pushed up in A-Halls, has full control towards the spawn. At this point, crew are 100% certain, with the second player committed towards Let's holding dish, that this is going to be a B it's hit. Those players are on edge left. and ready to pounce the second the Furies start to make their way forward. And it's going to be, again, no that Viper's here. pit coming through. This can open up the opportunity, as we discussed before, to make it in towards the spawn. But they've already eliminated Mizino. Now, there actually might be an opportunity for Fury to get to the site. Unfortunately, though, they've lost a player in return, and the time really is starting to Ten tick away. Left. Ten seconds for them to try and get something done, but they're just Spike beginning to land team. every single shot, even looking for a kill onto a teammate. It is this Spike man, though, remaining. Kesnit in a one versus two. He's been killing anyone that's put into his path so far. <laughs> I've got full comfort. Uh, have you now? Have uh, you? I, I think the exact phrase you use, I've never sweated this much in my life. <laughs> so that's going to go on the top 10 things viewers wish they didn't know. <laughs> well, we're 9-7 to seven here as we return to play. Kruv just had their timeout still onto a buy round. Klaus is going to nerf himself a little bit, but playing behind his Viper utility, that's going to be just fine. We got to look at Crew and what they're attempting in the early round because we've had a lot of aggression out of them, but now they seem to be stagnating a little bit. That's not always a bad thing, though because they're looking to get Nags at a pick with that operator. He's just not finding any opportunities just yet. Zand is already deep within the site. They've used that Rolling Thunder to try and take some space. But again, we're looking at these ciphers. They've just been incredible throughout this map. Both players, obviously, in the first half, we saw the same from QZK. The thing is, though, they've taken control elsewhere. QZK mentioned his name. He only gets himself one. And now we have to counter Rolling Thunder. The spike, though, is still not made it in. And it doesn't even seem to matter that the stun came in onto Khalil because he's just landing the shots anyway. Left into a two versus two. Make that just one as the spike looks to be planted. But his teammate's so far away, he can't actually risk this. If he died, there would just be the defuser. It's better to just almost try and bait that clock a little bit longer. But NZR is walking as slow as humanly possible. The dash... That's why we love Valorant. That's why we love comp FPS it's even, in general. It's even just pausing the plan because I was yeah, sat there yeah, going, yeah. don't plan, don't yeah, plan, don't plan. Don't. But instead he then goes, if I fault line him here, where yeah, is he gonna I, go? like, that's yeah. so, I didn't even think of that as a concept. I was like, oh, I was just delaying time. And then he pushed him into his his own team. I, that's superb. I I'm, say, I'm loving this Furia team, like really loving it. This game coming out same time as Arcane was just unfair, honestly. I, I got the Arcane one. Sheriff and then I saw that come out. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> I had to buy this I need sheriff. one for each half. We need to be able to pick a skin I for I didn't half. like when Zilv actually tweeted me like, you're going to buy this. It? I was like, yeah. you don't know me. <laughs> yeah, and then you immediately did. Yeah, or you already had. No, yeah. Oh, we're I like the green one. Furia want to just blitz in towards this site. You still have Klaus down below with the Sheriff we saw earlier on. They haven't cleared him out, so he's going to be good for two. The drop down from Zan deals with him eventually, but that's quite a lot of damage done for just a pistol and the knives coming out for crew to give them the advantage. This has got very, very scary. You've got here Zan and Khalil in this after plan. Now, the weaponry is still a little bit weaker, and sure, you might have the knives Whoops. available, but so low on HP, the flash is decent, but he completely misses. It's an issue for sure. The shot from Delzik's nice, though, and it's left all onto Khalil. The youngster trying to clutch this one out, but he can't quite land the shot. It's now, shout out whoever was observing him just swinging underneath yeah. as well to catch that. That's, that's gorgeous play right there. 10 to 8.
Early aggression out of Nags that this guy loves to get in their faces, but with the Operator, we ain't seen too much of him, and we won't see too much of him this time either, as he's going to give up that dish control, a wise choice, as Fury have got a couple of players around this area. And again, we're seeing that deep Viper's Pit on the B site in combination with Scythe Utility, which just makes it almost a rock and allows for that extra space to be challenged for. Zan, though, just dashing through. This, no, sorry. Have they actually, did they put that Nebula down themselves for him to oh. dash into oh. or they get the space. He's just sat there like, guys, don't worry. I'm still Not holding here on A. And well, eventually he will fall in exactly the same regard. Mazin, he can see the spike. I, I, I really, I really have to once again double down on the fact that the decision making of this crew team has improved exponentially. The fact that to start out the round, Nags that wants to get aggressive on Dish, that is the game plan. They see a bit of utility come in and return, and they decide, mm, I don't really want to risk it. Up at Bike has it in those early aggressive yeah. spots. Just having that breach utility, whether it's your fault line, whether it's your flash, and indeed, we see it at the start of this round. Kesnet plays in towards the B site, pops down yeah. his utility, rotates out, and allows this hole to come through from Nags. It has to use the dash to get out of there after good counter utility by crew who now have this control and exchange i am loving the way that these teams are fighting for the map control that right there one of the more interesting engagements you'll get and it's not like oh look he's got three kills it's just like it's really fun to watch these players minds at work okay i'll stun here i'll flash here to allow us to peek and how does your opponent respond it doesn't end up in a fight but that's almost the best yeah. engagement because it's it's like the brainy play yeah for the that one was for the nerds Oh, yeah. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but there's some people out there going, that's not going to go in a highlight kill. package. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's, oh, look at this fault line. It's incredible. No, no one cares about that. We just want to see the headshots. And I think we're about to see a couple. Nags it again <laughs> going to be forced out of position. But look who is hiding behind Ooh. this box. Kesnet hasn't been spotted. They know that the jet fell back. This is where he has an opportunity to strike and completely catch them off guard. He's good for the first. Blindsided, what? but still takes left. down Khalil. A three versus four on the back of it. But Furion needs to hurry up, and they've still got Nagzit to deal with. Yeah, and he's been dodging and weaving all of this time, just trying to avoid getting killed early, and finds the perfect spot to grab a couple of kills. Now NZR, 15 seconds. There's no... Tom, you told me this was going to be 10 to 10. I would have been crying before we started this match, because I'd assume it was fumbles God. and terrible play. Someone actually this is gorgeous. tweeted us saying that we deserve double digits in the ones. All oh, right. Okay. There Thanks, you Tom. go. Yeah. There you go. It was me. Yeah. Okay. You, it was you that brought it up, Tom. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but but yeah. I, I'm just don't shoot the messenger. That's that's the sure. Say. <laughs> sure. But you can't look at not, not quite a fair comparison, but <laughs> no, I'm I'm impressed so far, and I'm I'm ready to go to OT if the teams are, but we don't get to decide that, Tom. We don't write the script. We don't. Let's go! Oh no! Wait, Sue does. Sorry. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Let's take a look here, though. Crew on that defensive side, they haven't got a lot of control. They've not played super aggressive, but they have stacked up the A side with Nagzit as well, holding Dish completely. If Furia went A, they would be running into a pretty heavy stack with support from Nagzit. Instead, they're going to rotate back. But the problem is, again, they're going to run into that utility that we've seen yeah. uh, be very successful for the crew side. Instantly, as they look to actually rotate through, you just see all of yeah. that utility go up within a matter of seconds. They've still got the cam watching over the top. Like, it's just delay tactics as the rotation already comes back through as well from Kesnit, just to make sure that even if they do get a little bit further, they have the stun available. Klaus perfectly placed. Sure, he only gets a couple. Uses the gravitational well. That is burning up enough time that when Furia push in, they've only got a couple seconds left on their smokes, which yep. then dissipate, leave them completely in the open. And the last second, can execute is completely ruined. That is exactly what we want to see in the early round. And right here, Crew getting away with another opening duel. Nags it good for one, post it back up. And Tom, he's still got his dash online after that engagement. He's so comfortable right now that he didn't even feel the need to bail. Yeah, he has support as well. You've mentioned that deadly duo along with the breach, just basically allowing him to reclaim extra control that he previously lost. It means that any of those peaks are nowhere near as risky. And, well, I think that one actually caught him in the face, but, you know, <laughs> and then it, 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 it happens Filming. sometimes. <laughs> now, this is the Furia really postured up towards Dish. They've got the control that they've been fighting for again and again. We saw it defensive side. Defensive side, they kept defending it, right? They, they, were, they were anchored down there.
But now on the attack, I want to see how they're going to use it. And the biggest problem, as you said, the spike is alone. Sure, QCK is going to find the first, but they need to deal with Nagsen, who's currently cutting off that spike rotation in. Uh, this becomes a pretty big problem left. for them to try and clear. Now, there is another fault line available for Mazin if he wants to try and make things a little bit more awkward. This is a Viper's Pit that's a slightly more common one. It allows you to drop down without too many issues. It's expected, though, okay. however. It's clean. And Zand is just going to double up as well, leaving Mizino left. He's got a neural theft, but I don't left. think it's going to win him the round. I do like the idea from Furia. I, it still planted. is very risky yeah. having Mazin go like that, but... The fact is he didn't peek into any angle that Nagsit would realistically be on until the Viper's Pit was already down on the site and players were pushing in. In reality, that translates to him either dying when he comes around the corner or the most likely, and what happened, Nagsit is looking at the site. He's trying to deal with those players because at this point he thinks, hey, no one's coming here. No one's starting to push up behind me. And even if he does die, his teammates have already made it to site, should be able to trade up against that operator. It was a risk, but it's something that paid off massively for them as they'll clock up an 11th round, and of course, uh, well, assuming Mizino doesn't somehow defuse that spike, which I don't think he's going for. Instead, he wants to make this costly. Trying to remove of his team. Let's see if it works out as we jump right into the second last round of regulation. Ready. In terms of stars, a lot of presence in towards A main. Now, we know that this is something that we've seen exit challenge for the majority of the map. So you could just see that the attackers are almost just gonna start throwing down utility just to make sure that if they do look for this control, they're not gonna get instantly killed by an operator. Like even now that they have a smoke down, Zand is still like, right, jiggle peek. Jiggle. He hasn't shot, I'm gonna jiggle peek. I'm gonna jump peek. I'm gonna jump, nope, he still hasn't shot. Okay, I'm good. Guys, I've got a make control. And in the meantime, Nax is on the other side of the map on dish, just watching like, <laughs> I have no idea what's going on over there. It's irrelevant to me. Yeah, he's focused on his one task, man. Until he hears his name, like they could be screaming, rotate, rotate, BB. He just needs to hear Nags and then he's on his way. This is going to be tough oh for Dell to go. He's in a lot of. Oh How is he still alive? He'll be taken down by Mazin eventually, but the trade is instantaneous from Kesner, who just leaves the site content to play the retake that they want. Once that cosmic divide has gone down, and they're going to even waste a little bit more time trying to. Oh no. Ooh. Oh, Nagsit, he's been See waiting ya. here all round, and now he won't left. get any opportunity to punish his opponent who has just zipped away. Yeah, that afterplant now becomes a little bit stronger as well, because they're going to have two players around A main with a chance to just spam this through. Leo waiting within the site, and Nagsit just hoping for a pot shot, hoping he can bait someone out, but. Khalil has some smokes of his own. I don't know if they'll expect him to just be sat on the spike as well. Like, it's a, a bit of an odd position, but his teammates have such a solid crossfire that could make things a little bit difficult. However, Kesner again, standing. has already managed to find one. He needs to do work with a classic, and he will hit himself a ding. But it's QZK looking to try and take away that top fragger from him. And he's been doing a damn good job of it. And it was a good chance that QCK wouldn't have been alive at that stage. A missed up shot that lets him that zip away, goes to the other side of the map, and then ends up walking out with the victory in that 2K to close things. I mean, look, <laughs> they are very thankful that that shot did not connect. And a couple of QCKs didn't connect either. That was a long spray, but you'll forgive it on that sort of aggression. Pretty devastating round. If your crew after that timeout called, they are now 11 to 12 down. This has been a damn good fight on Crew's map pick, but Fury came in prepared to play Fracture. Oh my god, I thought Zand was about to be caught off. The Blade Storm on the other side of the map takes down the hero of the previous round in the form of QCK. And as he has lost, the chances of overtime increase. Crew one step closer to their goal. Oh, oh, maybe not for long. Zand, he's got the smell of his opponents looking to try and hunt them down. It's a blade storm on blade storm action. He still hasn't cleared out the bottom of the site. I don't they know, know if he though. realizes this. Yeah, yeah, he does. I think so. It's still going to be very difficult. His teammates peeking a little bit wide. This has become incredibly awkward. A trade back and forth. Zan runs out of the knives, but it doesn't matter because Khalil's decided to pop off the youngster looking to try and help them close this. It's left all on to Nagsit. One versus two. He gets the individual duel, but he can't.